everybody. My name is Charles Claussen. I'm a licensed attorney and certified public accountant in Nevada. Also, also uh, a broker, broker salesman here in Nevada, and I'm very, very happy to be with you today to talk about asset protection, protection estate, estate planning, and properties with, with multiple owners, owners which, which is also called a syndication. Um, I, don't I don't know, if Michael, are they going to be able to ask questions during, or are they saving questions until the end? Uh, let's save it to the end, probably easier. Okay. But, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so I um, just, just want to remind everyone that that the um, legal topics that I'll be talking about today uh, apply generally to all states, but they are specific to Nevada, so your local laws and your, your jurisdiction may be different, so I advise you to consult a attorney license in your area for specific matters. So let's go. First to asset protection. So when the most important things about asset protection is uh, the timing of setting up your protection plan. If you wait until after an event has occurred, then, um, then that's not going to look very good. So timing is important. Another important uh, piece of asset protection is who owns the asset. And then uh, we're going to talk about the risks associated with the different assets and then different types of entities that you can use for asset protection. So, okay, so, okay, so let's talk about timing. So, so the, the first thing that's going to happen is, is that you're going to have something negative happen. You're going to get sued. Or, or you're going to get in an accident and then get sued, or, or someone's going to slip and fall and then you're going to get sued. But typically, you're setting up an asset protection plan to protect you in the event of claims from another person, like lawsuits, that's the most common, but it could also be a creditor, a lender, a bank, a private money beneficiary. Um, those, those are the people, people who, are going, going, who, who will go after, after your assets. assets. And, it's and it's important that you have your asset protection plan, plan in place before something happens. Because, because uh, for example, if you own a rental, rental property in your, in your own personal name, and something, and something happens on the property, the, the tenant, tenant is, is going, going to sue you, you as the owner of that rental property. If you try to transfer that property after the event into the name of a limited liability company or some other name other than your own, the, uh, the courts will sometimes view that as a fraudulent transfer, meaning that you're trying to move assets out of harm's way. So, so timing mean, is super important. important. I mean, I mean it's, it's the perception what you're, what you're doing. Now, now here are the types of risks involved. involved. If, you if you own rental property and you have tenants, uh, you're, gonna you're gonna have a slip, a slip and fall, fall or um, some, some sort of um, some, some sort of accident on the property. property. Maybe. Maybe uh, a handrail falls off down the stairs, someone, someone trips on a stairway, or someone, or someone trips on the curb, or a, or a step, or, or someone, someone gets burned by the hot water, or, or any, any number of accidents that can happen around the house. You also, you also have environmental risks with, with a mold, if there's, if there's been a constant source of water, or, or if the home is old enough, you may, you may have asbestos, lead, or, or rain on or other types of environmental and environmental problems. The thing, the thing that you have to appreciate in today's world is that there are so many personal injury attorneys out there. And when you combine just the, the attitude of a personal injury attorney with a greedy tenant, then a homeowner or an investor can really put themselves in harm's way. 
I remember going to a seminar one time by a personal injury attorney, and he started off his presentation basically by bragging about how expensive his suit was, talking about how expensive his car in the parking lot was, and then basically telling everyone, I own all of these expensive things because I, I, I sue to the maximum, you know, to the maximum I can. I mean, I mean, it basically made me afraid to get my car and drive home for a fear of anything happening. So there's just, there are people that are out there looking uh, aggressively to sue you. Now, um, in, that in, that first, in the first section, we're talking about like um, risk related to uh, the property itself. But if, but if you own property, property that, that property can also be subject to claims against you. So if, so if you're, you're in an automobile accident and, and it's your, your fault, then since somebody can sue you, you and go, and go after all of your, your assets that are, that are in your name. So if, so if you own a home in your name, they can, they can go after that, that asset. If you have investment property in your name, go after, go after the investment property. So, so automobile accidents are, are a common thing. Uh, other risks that you would have for claims against you personally would be your personal creditors, people who own you money, business creditors, if you own a business and you have um, guaranteed the credit that the business received. Um, also, also, there could be divorces, divorces where um, where, the where the property needs to be divided. divided. So, so, so those are the risks against, against um, that, that can come your way, either, either from the property or from, from, from your own from your own, your own individual life. life. Now, now, so, so when, it when it comes to asset protection, protection uh, the, the name that the, that the asset is titled in. It's important, it's important because, because, because whoever, whoever is getting sued, sued you, want you want to try to keep that, that different than the, 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 name, the name that the asset, asset is held in. So, so for example, example, if you own a rental property, you should, you should not own the rental property in your own, own personal name. name. You should, you own, should the own the rental property in the, in the name of something else, else. Like, like an entity, a limited liability company or a corporation or something else. Um, if, uh, because you want to try to separate the risks from each other. So in, in the pictures that I put on here, think about um, your kitchen refrigerator. You, you, you wouldn't put onions in the same Tupperware as a fruit salad, right? Because the onions are going to Make, make the, the fruit salad, salad all stinky. So you want so to keep, keep the onions, onions in their own compartment, and you want to you keep, keep the fruit salad in their, in their own compartment. And, and when, it when it comes to asset, asset protection, you want, you want to keep everything compartmentalized so that, so that the, the risks are with, with, the, with, with the related asset and, and, and no more. Now, now let's, let's say, say an investor has a hundred different properties. Well, well, he, he could set, set up a hundred different limited liability companies to protect, to protect each one of those, one of those properties and keep those risks, risks separated. That's, that's an option. But, but um, you're, you're always trying to maintain, maintain a balance between all of the, all of the administrative burdens of keeping, of keeping everything separate at the, at the same, same time maximizing your asset, your asset protection. protection. And we'll, and we'll talk, talk a little bit more about how to um, keep, keep that balance, that balance in, just in just a moment. Now, now um, so, one so one of the, one of the best, best ways to protect, protect your own assets is, is, is to get the assets out of your, of your own individual name. name. And, and the best way to do that is to create, create, create an entity um, in, order in order to, to hold, hold that, that asset. asset. So, 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 so the first item up there is one, one way you can own an asset is in your own individual name. That's, that's perfectly fine, fine but that, that asset, asset will now be subject to the, the, all of your own personal and individual risks. Um, 
Now, now uh, the, the, the next the one, one, so if you start using entities, some, some people use limited partnerships and general partnerships. Uh, limited partnerships and general partnerships, in my opinion, from a legal standpoint, are like the car from the 1900s on the left. Uh, they were they were good in its day because there was nothing better. But I'm, but I'm here to tell you today is there's something much better than limited partnerships and general, and general partnerships. One of, the, one, of the, one of the primary problems with, with partnerships is that, is that the, the partners remain liable to, to each other for the, for the other person's death. death. So, so that's not, not a good that's not a good set to have. Uh, better, better than partnerships are corporations. Uh, but, uh, but those require a lot, a lot of administrative work to, to keep those compliant every year. And, and so, uh, the, the best vehicle or entity, or entity in, in today's, today's, today's world is a limited liability company. And that, and that really represents the, the, the license on the right hand side of your screen. Um, limited, limited liabilities have been established in almost every state, every state now so that, so that People can own assets, assets in, the in the name of, of, of an entity, of a limited liability company, protect, protect their, their own personal assets from, from the, the debts and claims of, of the limited liability company. In Nevada, in Nevada we, even we even have something uh, better than that called the, the series limited liability company. Uh, uh, which, which was created, created to uh, uh, address this particular problem. Let's, let's say, say that some an investor owned 10 different, different properties, and, and, and he was really, really adamant about having, having the best asset protection, protection he could find. So he, so he created a different limited liability company for, for each, each one, one of those 10, 10 investment properties. Well, well, you, you have 10 limited, limited liability, liability companies then to administer every year and, and to create initially. So you've, so got, you've got all the startup costs of the, of the 10 limited, limited liability, liability companies, uh, which, uh, which is, is substantial, substantial. But, then but then even on an annual basis, basis your annual filing fees in Nevada are $350. So, so with, with 10 different limited, limited liability companies, that, that is the annual burden of that plan, plan would be minimum of filing fees, which would be 3500 What, what the, the Nevada, Nevada Series Limited Liability Company laws did is it allowed an investor, an investor to create one series, series limited liability, liability company that, that he filed every year, so just $350. Underneath, underneath that series, series limited liability, liability company, he, he could have an unlimited number of sub-series limited, limited liability, liability companies that all, all enjoy the same asset protection as if those, those sub-series were their own individual companies without, without the cost and the burden of separate, separate administration. So, so, you know, we, you know, we had a lot of real estate investors come into our, our market in the, in the um, around 2000, 2000 and 11 and 12, and 12 that, that purchased, purchased a lot of properties. This really, really helped save them a lot, a lot of money on, on their annual filing fees. So, so on, a on a simple, simple asset, asset protection strategy, strategy the, first the first thing you got to do is transfer assets, assets into their own, their own entity or into their own, their own entities, entities, depending on, on how complicated, complicated you want to get. What you're, what you're trying to do is contain the risk of that particular asset to just that asset. So if you, so have, if you have rental property, property um, you're, that, that rental, rental property, property will always be subject to a tenant, a tenant flipping, flipping and falling or hurting themselves. But, but you, can you can keep that loss and contain just, just to that property by, by putting, putting that property in, in its own entity. entity. What, you're what you're also trying to do is, is, is isolate, that isolate you, you from, from the risk of that asset. asset. So, by so by putting that investment property in the, in the name of an entity, if a tenant slips and falls, and falls they're only, only going to be able to sue that, that the, owner the owner of the house which is, which the, is limited the limited liability, liability company, not, not you, you individually. Trying to, trying to isolate that house from, from your from your problems, problems as well. So, so 
Um, um, if, you, if you get into a car wreck, you don't, you don't want, want the person, person you hit to be able to, able to get, get to that investment house. house. They, can they can only sue you personally, personally not, 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 the not the limited liability, liability company that you own. And so, and so you're really trying to keep um, the, problems the problems of one property with, with that, that particular, particular property and, and not, not let those, those problems spread, spread to, to other, other assets. So how, so how do you execute a plan like this? Will you, will you create, create the entity, entity or entities? You actually, you actually have, have to deed the property, property from, from your, own your own individual name to the, to the name of the entity. And be, and be sure, sure to remember to request either a new, a new title, title insurance, insurance policy or, or um, as possible to get possibly a rider or, 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 or an endorsement on your existing title insurance policy. Because, because once, 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 that, that, once, that once that property is transferred, is transferred without, without a new title insurance, insurance policy, your, your old title insurance, insurance policy will, will terminate. And, and you'll, you'll want, want that coverage going on. Remember, Remember to get great property and casualty insurance because, because uh, like, in, like the in the example of a slip and fall on an investment property, property. Um, just, just because you put, you put that property into a limited liability, liability company doesn't, doesn't mean you're never going to have a problem. I mean, you, I mean, you could have, have a slip and fall or some accident at the property and the, and the owner of that property is going to get a suit. Well, you well, you'll want to make sure that you have enough property and casualty insurance on that, on that property to satisfy, to satisfy any potential claim, claim that, that you might have. have. As, As a side note, note I, just I just want to remind all of you that, that, that you can save, save some money by going to an independent insurance, insurance agent rather than, rather than, um, rather rather than, than a captive insurance or like a, a name brand. Uh, um, there, are there are independent insurance, insurance agents that, that represent a half a dozen different insurance agents and they, and they can give you a quote from, from those six different companies all at once, rather than you, you have to go shop one, one and company to the next company to the next company to the next company. That way, that way you can make sure you're getting the best, best premium um, uh, for the best coverage. And then, and then one, one of the very most important, important things about, about having a limited liability company or an entity of any kind, kind is you, is you have, have to honor you have to honor, honor the paperwork, and, and what, what that, that means is um, you, you you have to treat that company like it's its own deal. deal. Uh, um, you you cannot, cannot treat the company like, like your own personal checking account. account. You know, pay, you know, pay your piano lessons out of it, it or pay personal expenses out of it. Out of it. it has to be treated like a real company. Um, you may, you may have someone who's suing, suing you, you and they, and they want to try to get in, break into, get, get past that, that the protection, protection offered by that limited liability, liability company. Legally, Legally that's called, they're, they're trying, trying to pierce the corporate, the corporate veil. veil. You, may you may have heard of those, those terms before. before. The easiest, the easiest way, way for someone to pierce the corporate, the corporate veil, veil and, and get through to your assets is, is, is by you not, not respecting, respecting and complying, and complying with, everything with everything that you have to do with that entity. So that, so that means filing, filing your annual filing and, and, and having, having its own separate, separate checking account, account and preparing its own financial, financial statement um, and, and having all your documents, which, which um, for, for every, every limited liability, liability company, company you're going to need articles, articles of organization and, and you're going to need an offering agreement. Um, um, in, in many states, states to start, to start a limited liability, liability company, company, you only need articles of organization, but, but you, should you should always, on your, on your own, prepare or have prepared an operating, an operating agreement as well. Okay, okay so, so that's that's, that's portion, portion on uh, asset, asset protection. So, so uh, if, you if you have any questions, uh, uh, then we'll address, address just write them, write them down and I'll, and I'll be happy to answer any questions, any questions that you might have at the end, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so, okay, so let's talk about estate planning for a second. second. Estate, estate planning is um, where, where are the assets going to go, going to go when someone passes away? away? And, and statistically, statistically speaking, uh, every one of us is going to die. And very few of us know when. 
like, uh, like, uh, like, I, like I sometimes joke and say, say that, like, like well, well, any of, any of this could be hit by a meteorite right, right now. And there's, and there's a, a news story you can see, see at the upper right hand corner where people, and I believe that's in Russia, uh, were actually hit with, with, with meteorites. But, but probably, probably more likely is we would, we would be involved in some in sort of car wreck. And, and unfortunately, that can happen as early as today to any, to any one of us. Because we're, we're all out driving in our cars, and, and, who, and who knows what will, what will ever happen. So we, so we all we, we wake, wake up every day thinking we're going to live forever, live forever but, but, that's but that's not, that's not, that's not actually what's going to happen. So when, so you, when you pass away, away you, you're, you're concerned, concerned that will, will the right people uh, get, your get your assets? And also, and also how, much how much time and money will your, your heirs have to have spend, spend in, order in order to receive them? So the, so the simplest, simplest most basic part of, part of asset of protection, I'm sorry, sorry is estate planning is writing a will. But that, but that is very old and, and uh, only, only gives you like, like a minimal, minimal amount of estate, estate planning. So, so it's, really it's really easy to do, to do a will. To do a will. Most, most states recognize holographic wills, wills which are handwritten. handwritten. You could, you could during, this during this presentation, write, write a holographic will, will Say, I, Charles Claussen, give, give the following assets to, to uh, Scooby-Doo Scooby and, and sign it and date it. And, and most, most states, states will recognize that. That, that, that will, will tell, tell, tell everyone, everyone who, who you want to receive, to receive what. what. The, problem the problem is a will, a will has to be probated. And, and, uh, and, and we'll talk, we'll talk about, about probation in just a minute. minute. If, if, if you don't have even a will, all, all the states, states have identified um, a pecking order of who is going to get your assets if you, if you die without, without any direction on where, where your assets are supposed to go. So, so you know, if, if, you if you don't care where your assets go and you just want to let the state decide, decide well, it's, it's already, already written to your, your um, local, local laws. laws. Now what, now what probate, probate is, is, probate is, is it's, it's basically, basically a, it's a court, court proceeding where, where the court, court um, authorizes the transfer, the transfer of assets that, that need written, written authorization. Here, 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 here are two examples. If, if I have a, a um, Let's say I have a Star Wars action figure on my desk, and I want, and I want my son to receive that Star Wars action figure when I die. That, that, that's, that's pretty easy to accomplish, as long as, long as, long as, long as someone knows that, they can, they can hand that Star Wars action figure to my son, and it's, it's complete. There's, there's, no, there's no document or anything that has to be signed for that. However, think about a car, that has, that has a title as a piece, as a piece of paper, or a or piece, a piece of, real of real estate that requires, that requires a deed. deed. Those, Those two types, types of assets require a written, written piece, piece of paper, of paper to, to transfer them. them. If, if you, you die and you, and you have a piece of real estate that's titled in your individual, individual name, and you, and you wanted to go to, let's say you wanted to go to Mickey Mouse, well, well, after, after you die, die you're, you're not available to sign, to sign the deed to, to Mickey Mouse. Mouse. And, and the, the probate, probate here, the probate proceeding in court is what, is what accomplishes the execution, the execution of that deed without, without you, from you, from you transferring, transferring the house from you to, you to Mickey Mouse. Mouse. Um, um, and the, and problem the problem with probate is that it can, it can be time-consuming, which, which would keep the assets from your heirs' use. use. But, it's, but it's also expensive. Here in Nevada, Nevada the, average the average cost of a probate is 6 to 7 percent of the, of the gross value of the estate. Now, the thing, now, the thing is, probate, probate can be avoided with, with proper estate planning. planning. So, so one, one of the most common instruments in, in the estate, estate plan is a trust. Of trust. And think, and think of a trust, of a trust like, like a limited, limited liability, liability company or a corporation. 
A trust, a trust is, is just another name for an entity that has, has its own life outside, outside of yours. yours. So just, so just as if you start a limited liability company, if you pass away, that limited liability company is still alive and well. If you form a trust and you pass away, that trust is still alive and well. That, that, that's how a trust is able to avoid probate is because if you own a house and the house is, in, is owned by your trust, when you pass away, the successor trustee has authority to sign the deed to that house to whoever you've identified as your beneficiary. So you, so you don't have, have to go to court, and you can avoid that, that expense and that time. Uh, a trust, trust is a long document that allows you to identify what, what of your assets should, should go to who. who. It gives, it gives you a lot, lot of control after your death, death, meaning assets, assets can be held for an amount of time if you have young beneficiaries, and you want, and you want some of your estate, your estate to go to their education or to their housing, you can you can, you can spell all that out. In addition, In addition you can um, identify who you, who you want to be the guardians or the caretakers of minor children. Um, and, you and you can identify who your successor trustees are, which the best way to think of a successor trustee in layman's terms is that's who's going to be the executor of your estate. There's, there's principally two types of trust, a revocable trust, meaning you can change it or revise it at any time, and then, and then there are irrevocable trusts, which means they can't be changed, and typically you cannot be the trustee. The, 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 the primary difference between those two, other than the ability to revise them, is that the revocable trust offers you no asset protection. Whereas, Whereas the, the irrevocable trust does, 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 does give, give you asset protection. protection. Most, most, most uh, common, common estate, estate plans contain revocable trusts, trust. meaning, meaning even, even if you have an amazing, an amazing estate, estate plan with a, with a trust and your, and your house is in the name of that trust, you have, you have great estate, estate planning, planning accomplished, but not, but not necessarily, necessarily any asset protection, protection then. Um, um, and, 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 and a complete estate plan includes not, not only uh, a revocable, trust, uh, some kind of trust, but also, but also includes durable, durable powers of attorney in, in, in the event that um, the, the person, person is incapacitated in some, some way, in some, in some sort of coma, or unable to act for themselves. themselves. Okay, so here are the two most important things about having a trust. One is the trust is only good if you move assets into the trust. And that has to be that has to be done officially. So if you own a house in your name, the 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 house is not in the name of the trust until you prepare and record a deed transferring the house from your name into the name of your trust. Same with, Same with any other asset. That, that asset has, has to be owned properly by the, by the trust. Also, also it's, it's important, important to update your trust. trust. As, uh, as, uh, as life goes on, um, you know, people, you know, people who, who you trusted, trusted at one time, time to be your successor trustee may have, may have fallen out with, so you want a different successor trustee. You may, you may have different beneficiaries that you want to give assets to. to. And so, and so what, what I recommend is usually like, like a, a, a once, once a year, and, and you, can you can pick a date, January, January 1st or some, some holiday, but just, but just get in the habit of once a year thinking, thinking about have there, there been any changes in your circumstances, circumstances or, the or the people that, that you've identified in your estate, your estate plan that, that need to be revised. So, so and, 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 in and in conclusion, you definitely, you definitely want to let your beneficiaries know, know the, attorney the attorney that you use or where, or where the estate plan is located. It's just it, it's something, something as simple as, hey, hey if, I if I pass away, contact, contact Charles Claussen at 702-858-9000. He'll take, He'll take care, care of everything. So, so you, you just got to give someone at least a starting point.
I would also I would also, I would also advise you that to, to let your let your, let your, let your family and loved ones know if something, if something happens to you, do not, do not have them make major, major financial decisions immediately after your death. A, a, lot, a lot of, of you know, you've got a lot of emotions going on. Most family, Most family members are not in the right frame of mind to make, to make the, the best, best financial decisions while everything, while everything is still fresh. Let the dust settle, settle. Get, some, get, some, get, some get some good advice on, on, on uh, what to do. Uh, a simple, a simple example of why to do that would be Let's say, Let's say that, that um, I passed, passed away, away and I left my wife with a, with a home, a mortgage, a mortgage but, a nice but a nice life insurance policy. policy. Well, well, most, most people, people would probably, probably just run out, run out take, the take the life insurance proceeds, proceeds pay out the mortgage, and now my wife can live, can live in this, in this home, home that's pretty clear. clear. But the, but the problem, problem is she's got, got no income, income. so, so how is she, she going to pay the property taxes, taxes? how is she going to pay for the electricity, how is she, she, she going to pay for her food and clothing, because uh, uh, the life that she's called proceeds, proceeds all, went all went to pay out the mortgage. It might, it might be better, be better for her to take those life insurance proceeds and invest those and get, and get a rate of return that, that is enough to pay the monthly mortgage and pay for her living expenses. So even, so even though she's still got the mortgage on the house, she has, she has income, investment income from the, from the life insurance proceeds. Those are just, Those are just two examples of like option A and option B, and option B how one might, might work and, work and another, another one might not, not uh, if you rush into uh, making, making decisions immediately, immediately after a death. death. And then, and then also, also leave a clear, clear trail of where, where uh, everything, everything is. is. So, so just keep, just keep a folder or an electronic drive or something where somebody, somebody can go in, in and see, and see what, what your bank accounts are, are see um, what, your what your assets are, are so, that so that it's just not, 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 not like a uh, uh, hiding ghost thing where someone out there, out there trying where, you where your successor, successor trustee is trying to figure out what assets, what assets you have. Okay, okay so, so that's... That was, that was estate planning. Now let's talk about real estate that is, that is owned by more than one person. So that's, so that's called a, a syndication, syndication or syndication is also when, when you're out there trying to, trying to get, in get investors, investors, multiple investors for, for a piece of property. Piece of property. So, so, so some, some, some options are you have, you have multiple, multiple people that own one piece, one piece of real estate, or you, or you have, have multiple people that own a company and that, and that company owns, owns the real estate. estate. Yeah, real, yeah real, real, estate, estate, real estate investment trust, trust you've got, you've got tenants in common, and you've got, you've got Delaware or statutory trust. trust. And we'll talk, we'll talk about each one of those briefly. So if, you so if you've got multiple people that own the same piece of property, property it, it matters, matters how, how those, those names are listed on the deed. deed. If, if, and let's, and let's just, just to make our, our examples, examples easy, we'll talk, we'll talk about if just two people own a piece of, piece of property. property. If two, if two people, people own the same piece of property as joint tenants, if, if person, person one dies, person, person two gets, gets the, all, of all of the property. If they, if they own, own the property as tenants in common, if person, if person one, one dies, person, person two still owns half the property, Person, person one's estate, estate owns, the, owns other, the other half, which is, which like, is like a very big difference between joint, joint tenants and tenants in common. Whether, whether or not it's a joint, joint tenant, tenant or whether, or whether they're, they're tenants, tenants in common should, should be specified clearly on the deed when those, when those two people purchase the property. The property. This can, this can be tricky when, when more than one person owns a piece of property because who, who, who controls what to, what to do or, or who makes the decisions on what to do, what to do with the property. Do we hold, do we hold it? Do we develop it? it? Who's responsible, responsible to pay the property taxes? taxes you know, who's, who's making sure, sure that there's no, there's no code violations or that the lot is being kept clean, clean and safe? safe. Um, and, and are there any limitations on selling uh, your, uh, your the one, one person interest, interest in the property when there's more than one person. For example, For example if you have, you have joint tenants in a piece of property, property that, that property cannot be sold 
to, to a, third a third party without, without both, both their of their signatures. signatures. Um, um, if, if only, only one person, person signs, signs that, that third, third party, party now becomes, now becomes a tenant, tenant in common, common with person, with person number, number two, even though, even though it, it used to be a joint tenancy. tenancy. That, that, that may be a little, little complicated verbally to follow, but I'm happy, happy to answer any questions on that. Um, um, most, most, common, the most the most common types, types of places you'll, you'll see joint tenancy are between husbands, husbands and wives or family members where if one, if one person passes away, away it's, it's natural that the surviving, surviving person owns 100% of property. But, but I, would I would tell you, you proceed very, very carefully in owning, in owning real estate with, with another person, person if you're not related, related to that person or married, or married to that person. Um, if we see, we see situations where there's a boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, they love, they love each other when they bought the house, but, but if things go south after that, then it can, it can really, really create a mess, a mess on how to, how to unwind that what and what happens even, even worse, worse is if one, one of them passes away, away um, then, 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 then does, does that does the does deceased, deceased person's estate, estate get their get half, half or does, or does everything, everything all the equity, all the equity go, to go to the surviving, the surviving person? Okay, okay so, so you may, you may have, have a situation, situation where you have multiple people that own a company, like a like long as a life building company, that, that the, company the company owns the real estate. So again, so again, don't do it, don't do it in a partnership, do it in a limited liability company or even a corporation. And, 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 in, and in that, that case, case, who controls or who decides what to do? Well, that's, well, that's easy, easy because that's already been decided, decided by the limited, by the limited liability, liability company documents, which would be, which would be the operating, operating agreement or in the case of a corporation by, by its bylaws. bylaws. All right, tells, All right you tells you who's the manager, who's, the manager, who's, in, who's in charge, what's, 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 their, what's their authority, authority are there limits, are there limits on, their on their authority, authority um, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, so, so any limitations, any limitations on transferring or selling an interest in the real estate, that, 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 would, that would relate to, to if, I if I am an art owner of a limited liability company, company can, I can I sell my interest, my interest in that company to somebody, somebody else? else? Your, Your operating agreement should, should say, um, yes, you, yes, you can sell that, that or you can sell that after you've given, given the other owners, owners the first the right, right to purchase that. that. They don't if they don't want it, then you're free to sell it. Or, or it, it may be that, 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 that any transfer is prohibited. That's why it's, That's why it's important for you to read, read, read your entity documents, documents or, or pay, somebody pay somebody to read your entity documents. Entity documents. And definitely, and definitely an entity, entity if you've got uh, multiple, uh, multiple owners of a piece, of, a piece of, property, of property, going through an entity is definitely, definitely the preferred way. way. I recently, I recently advised on a, on a real estate, estate transaction where there had there been, had been like three pages of signatures of individual owners on this piece of property. And so, so to sell, to sell it, it, develop, do anything, do anything with it, you literally have to go get 30 people to sign, to sign off, off and agree to it, which can be very cumbersome. Even, 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 if, even if everyone's in agreement, you still got, you still got to track down 30 different people on vacations and work, work and, and, out, of and out of state and in state. So, so better to better have, have if you have multiple owners, better, better have it under an entity, entity with, one, with person one person in charge. Now, now the, the, one the one note of caution is, with an, with an entity, you'll always, you'll always have what's called a registry agent. The most, the most important job of that registry agent is to be the person responsible to receive, to receive official, official notices on behalf, on behalf of the company. Whoever's, Whoever's the registered agent has, has to be responsible enough to receive, to receive those notices and, and process them or know what to do with them. They cannot, they cannot be someone who either ignores the letters, throws them, throws them away without opening them, or, 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 or I don't know what, but just it's got to be someone who opens, opens their mail and reads them. Okay, so with okay, so real, real estate investment trust, trust, to me, to me uh, a real estate, a real estate investment, investment trust just feels like, like a mutual, a mutual fund that's just, just made up of different, different pieces of real estate, of real estate instead, instead of, of different, different stocks. stocks.
And so, and so with, a with a real estate investment trust, trust there'll, be there'll be some sort of trust, trust agreement. And you, and you need to read the documents to know what kind, what kind of real estate that, that, that we are investing in and, and what, what your ability, how you purchase your percentage. Your percentage. Um, can, you can you sell it? it? Are you restricted from selling for a certain amount of time? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, now um, with, a with a tenant in common and the next one, which is the DST, uh, these, uh, these are much more these are much more hands on than a real estate investment trust where you just make your investment and just put, just put in your statements or a tenant, a tenant in common in a Delaware statutory trust. A tenant in common is called, called a TIC, a Delaware, Delaware statutory trust is an EST. Both of, Both of those are great, great ways for fractional, for fractional ownership. And I love, and I love fractional ownership. One, one, so here's, so the, here's way the way I just describe, describe fractional ownership. ownership. Let's say Let's you're a real estate, investor, real estate investor and, and you, you love, love the idea, the idea of, of owning a Walgreens, Walgreens or a Starbucks, or a Starbucks right, right on a sweet, sweet busy corner, corner in Southern, in Southern California. California. And wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be, that'd be an awesome real estate, real estate investment, investment, right? right? But, but if you by yourself, yourself don't, don't have eight million dollars to go to go buy that building and lease it to Walgreens, or to buy that, buy that Starbucks and, and lease it on, lease it on 15 a fifteen-year lease to Starbucks. To Starbucks. Um, let's say, um, let's you, say only you only have a million dollars. Well, well, what a tip or a DST allows you to do is um, take that take that million and combine, and combine it with other people to make up the other remaining seven million. To go, to go spend, spend eight million dollars on, that, on that building. So you, so you now, you now, you now are a part owner in the in the Walgreens building, building, building with others. With others. So, you so you have a fractional ownership in that building. So it allows, so it allows you to purchase commercial real estate that you might, that you might not, not otherwise be able to afford your on your own. Great thing about, thing about tenants, tenants in common is that they qualify for 1031 exchanges. exchanges. But, but they're, they're a little, a little bit of an older um, investment, investment vehicle, so, so sometimes, sometimes they can be cumbersome to administrate because um, you do, um, have, you do to have to be involved in the, in the management, management of, of the property. property. Make, sure make sure you read your documents. documents. Make sure, make sure you know what assets that, that, that the TIG is investing in. And make sure you, make sure you understand whether or not you're able, you're there's any market if you need, if you your, need money your money and and, and you have and to, you sell, have to sell your interest in the TIG. What I want to emphasize, emphasize is on the both the TIG and the DST, it, 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 really, it really feels like you, you are one of the owners of, the owners of that building. So you should, so you should, you should, you should fill that level of responsibility. responsibility. Delaware, Delaware statutory trusts are a newer, newer, newer vehicle. And, and, and I kind of like to think of a DST, a DST compared to a TIG is like, like what a, what a limited, limited liability company is to a limited partnership. It's just it's a just newer, newer of form of entity that um, has been has created, been created that, that improves upon uh, uh, the problems, problems that we had with ten and common investment. But again, but again, the same thing, thing their fractional ownership, they qualify, they qualify for 1031 exchange, they're administered, they're administered by a trustee, so you don't, so you don't have, have to be as involved. involved. But again, but again read, the read the documents, know what know assets, assets that, DST, that DST, or, uh, or what building, building, or buildings, or buildings that, DST that DST is purchasing. Make sure you, make sure you understand the liquidity, uh, or lack of liquidity, uh, as, a, as, a pro, as, as, as applicable. Okay, so, okay, so we're, just we're just wrapping up here, but this is like this like the bonus, bonus round. So this, so this, these, these are just some super, super, super hot trending items in the real, in the real estate, estate industry, industry. Especially, especially if there's any students listening. This, is, this, is, this, this first one is one of the most, of the most important things you need to learn from today's, today's webinar. webinar. The right, the right now, now email, also, also called, called wire transfer fraud, is, is one of the, one of the biggest, biggest problems in the real, in the real estate, estate industry. And, and uh, here's, uh, what, here's it what it is. Bad, bad, bad guys are, are hacking into emails. And, then and they are, they are say, let's say, let me back up. So, so bad guy hacks into a real estate, estate agency. 
and, and is, is not, not doing, doing anything except watching and monitoring, and monitoring the, the, the inbox and the outbox, the outbox reading, reading, the, reading the emails. The bad guy, the bad guy is watching for a transaction that's coming up and, and waiting, waiting for someone, someone either, the either the real estate, in this case, in this case the real estate agent, to, to email, email wire transfer, transfer instructions to the, to buyer, the buyer for earnest, earnest money or, 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 um, uh, uh, for purchase money or, or monitoring the real estate, real estate agent, agent representing the seller, seller uh, for, for wire transfer instructions coming from the seller. From the seller. Anyways, the, Anyways, the back end monitors these emails, emails and, and then, and then um, um, when, there's when, there's some, some, when there's when there's a transaction, transaction about to go down, down the, bad the bad guy, guy goes, goes in, perpetrates, perpetrates an email, an email from, one from one of the parties to, let's, to, let's, let's say, the title company and says, and says um, oh, oh uh, uh, my wire transfer, transfer information is 1234, not 5678. And because, and because he's, he's hacked, hacked into the email, email it, it looks like it's coming from that person. And, uh, and uh, if, 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 you if you just Google, Google search um, wire, transfer wire transfer fraud, you'll we'll see lots of news stories from around the country where unsuspecting, unsuspecting clients have wired, have wired money to bad guys instead of the title company because, because the email their email had been hacked and the bad, and the bad guys, guys changed the information midstream without, without anyone being aware of it. So, so what's your takeaway take take from, from that? Never, never accept, accept wire transfer, transfer instructions through the email. Through the email. And, if I, and in fact, even if, even I, if I got wire transfer instructions, instructions by, by, by fax or, or some other way, way um, I, would I would call the person, the person make, sure make sure that, that I, already I already knew their voice, and I would, and I would verify with, with the person, the person um, um, their wire, their, wire, their routing, routing number and their account number. I mean, I mean, it's, it's almost, almost to the point where you might want, you might want it to be super, super careful and say, I'm not going to receive any wire transfer, transfer instructions that aren't, that aren't in person. person. It, it's, it, it's almost, almost that, bad. that bad. And the problem, and the problem is, is the bad guys, they can get away with hundreds of thousands of dollars in one easy swipe. And the penalties for white collar crime are just not as severe as a violent crime. And so it's worth the risk, the risk for the criminals. So just, so just, just never, just never accept wire transfer information, information the email, the email and, advise and advise your clients never to, never to send wire, send wire transfer, transfer instructions or receive them the email as well. Second thing, Second thing is, is we're, we're, we are noticing that um, um, bad guys, bad guys will, also will also go into, into um, uh, the, uh, county the county records and find a piece of piece property, property that's, 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 that's great and clear. There's, and no there's no mortgage or, mortgage or deed of trust on it. And they'll, and they'll perpetrate, they'll do, they'll do uh, an identity theft and, and perpetrate the real owner, real owner of the property, get a fake driver's license or a sort of fake ID, and go sell, and go sell, sell that property or get a loan against that property. So. so if you own, if you own real estate, estate you, really you really need to keep an eye, eye on it both physically, physically and legally. Um, that goes, uh, that goes as, well as well for your limited liability, liability companies. In some in states, states uh, uh, you, you can just send in a form, in a form to, change to change who the manager on a limited liability, liability company is, and the state accepts it without any proof, proof or proof of identification. So just make sure that. You're filing, you're filing your, your annual filings, filings and every once in a while you're checking to make sure that if you're supposed to be the manager on a limited liability company, that the state, that the state still, still has you listed as the manager. And then just some general notes, notes. Never, never skip on due diligence. diligence. Uh, uh, even, a even a little bit of money can save, can save you a lot, a lot of heartache down the road. Down the road. Always get, always get title insurance, insurance and always, and always get, property get property and casualty insurance. Those things, Those are, things important are important and and, uh, and, are, and are worth the small, small amount, amount of money that you're paying up front in order to get that protection. So, so with that, with that um, we, are we are all now part of each other's network. network. So, so, so I invite, I invite you, you to take down my contact, contact information here. here. You're welcome, you're welcome to call or text anytime, anytime and, uh, and uh, you, you can email, email me with, with any questions, questions and, and I'd be happy, happy to um, answer, your answer your questions, questions give you my advice, advice give you a second opinion, opinion point, you in, point right you in the right direction, or anything, or anything that, that I can do to help you make your career, your career um, 
uh, much more success. And with, and with that, we'll open, we'll open it up for, for uh, there, we oh, there we go, questions, questions and, answers. and answers. Cool. Um, I just want to clarify on the very beginning about the SS protection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned about something like a pers personal credit or loan and marriage. Are they all going to against your both your personal residence and the investment property or? So, 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 uh, so uh, is the question you like, uh, what, how, what, how do you, how do you protect the asset, the asset, the asset of your own, of you like, of you like your own residential home, home versus, 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 yeah. So, so, so the best, so the best thing, thing you can do, you can do it's, it's complicated on your, on your own personal residence because, because it's, 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 a little it's a little more cumbersome to transfer your own personal residence into, into a, limited a limited liability company. Um, and, um, and, and, your, and your bank, your mortgage, your mortgage company, company may not even allow that for the, term, for the terms of your mortgage. So in, so Nevada, in Nevada, we have a great thing called um, Homestead, Homestead, Homestead Act, Act, which is different, different from the federal, federal bankruptcy Act. Homestead Act. But in Nevada, but in Nevada um, you, you can file, file a document for it, for it that gives you, gives you an additional five hundred and fifty thousand dollars of protection of that, protects that protects that much, that much inequity of your of your home. So most, so most people, people in Nevada, in Nevada between, between their first their mortgage, mortgage and and their and their five hundred and fifty thousand provided, provided by the by the Nevada Homestead Act. That usually, that usually covers most people's residential, residential homes in Nevada. In California, in California. Um, in California, in California I, don't I, don't know, I don't know if they, know they have a homestead uh, act that covers, that covers something like that. Like that. But if you, but have, if you have significant equity in your own, your own personal residence, residence then, you, then should you should consider an entity, an entity or some, some other asset protection, protection strategy, strategy to, protect to protect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in California, we also have that, but but the homestay is uh, my record show is only up to like a. Seventy-five thousand. Seventy-five thousand. Yeah, yeah, not much. Not yeah, yeah, much. and well, and, for and you, you have great home appreciation, home appreciation in California, so, so most people most probably, have probably have more than seventy-five thousand. Yeah. So, uh, so how about how about like your credit card? Those those charges are they going uh, against your? I don't know, residential or your investment property too? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so let's, let's say you have credit card, card debt, um, and, and the credit, and the credit card, card is in your name, that credit, that credit card company can go, can go pursue, can pursue any, asset any asset that is, that is in your individual name. So that's, so that's an example of how if you have, if you have assets, assets if you, have, if a you have a credit card debt and, debt and you have other assets, assets you, should you should put those other assets into, into someone's, someone's name other than, other than your own, preferably, preferably an entity, um, mm -hmm. so that, so that your, credit your credit card company cannot go, cannot go after, after those assets. assets. Now, now, let, me let me also mention this. this. Some, people Some people think, okay, well, okay, well um, um, I have a home, home with, a lot, with a lot of equity in it. I'm going to do I'm some, do some asset, asset protection. I'm going to get it out of my name, and I'm going to, and I'm going to put it into my brother's name. Well, well, okay, that okay. That protects the home from my creditors, but now, but now it's open, open season for my brother's, brother's creditors because the, because the home's in his name. So just, so just changing from one from one, one, individual, one individual to another individual, individual you've, you've, you've just shifted the, the risk, but you haven't really eliminated. It. Whereas if, Whereas if you put it into the name of an entity, of an entity um, um, it's, it's, it's everything, everything is contained within that entity. 